Welcome back to the show. Rick Tittle with you, coast to coast and around the world on the American Forces Radio Network. We've had him in studio a couple times, a fellow Danish-American, an Emmy Award winner, one of the great voiceover guys, uh, cartoon legend himself. Rob Paulson is with us, and he's here to talk about Cancer Awareness Month, which is coming up next month. Rob, my friend, it's before the pandemic we had you in here. How you doing? I am breathing. I'm breathing and not in jail, but the day's not over yet. Thanks, pal. It's a pleasure, <laughs> as always, a pleasure to hear your dulcet tones. And Dominic was just delightful. It's uh, always a pleasure, my friend. If I make my living uh, doing cartoon voices, then I can only aspire to make a living with tones as purely dulcet and comforting as yours, Rick. Wow, that is praise yeah. indeed coming from you. Outside of uh, Dick Cavett told me I was good at radio. That's my second <laughs> favorite endorsement. Wow. Well, listen, if five minutes ago somebody has said, all right, you are going to be on national radio and be compared to being spoken of in the same sense as Dick <laughs> Cavett, I just said, give me a case of them shrooms, brother. Um, <laughs> no, that's uh, that's very kind of you, pal. It is always, always a pleasure, and I hope that, um, that the... Uh, the you know pandemic has softened up enough that I get a chance to darken your door again. It's always a, always a gas to hang with you. Well, we make our living with our voice, especially you. So much talent, and we talked about this before in person a couple of times. But you did have throat cancer, and um, yeah. it's great to have you with us. So the 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 Head and Neck Cancer Alliance. That's not something yeah. we hear about a lot. Tell us a little bit more, Rob. Well, I'm glad you asked, and thank you very much for having me and, by extension, us on the show. Um, the Head and Neck Cancer Alliance mission is to help those people uh, who help those of us who have been struggling with throat cancer and its after effects for many years. Uh, head and neck cancers, sadly, this year will affect upwards of 700,000 people worldwide. Um, it is not... Uh, as as often spoken of as you know lung cancer and breast cancer and testicular cancer and all of that 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 are every bit as as uh, horrible. Um, but years ago, <clears throat> when I was diagnosed with stage three throat cancer, uh, I was told at the beginning of my treatment, here's a deal, man. We're virtually sure we can cure you. This is a treatable form of cancer. But before we do, we almost have to kill you and for obvious reasons. Um, it's, you can't eat. You can't drink. You can't swallow for a while. It's, it's, it's pretty rough. But the treatment works like absolute. It, it's fantastic. It's magic. Um, and like a lot of other cancers, colon cancer, if it's caught early, it is absolutely curable. I am not in remission. I am cured. Um, and the head and neck cancer spreads awareness through nice folks like you and other outlets to let people know that there is help, that there are uh, resources for folks who have been diagnosed and the, and, um, and the people who love them uh, to learn. And, and you don't, uh, obviously, in, as in my case, I was fortunate enough to be surrounded by a team of world-class professionals, but um, not always... Uh, sorry, we don't always have that opportunity. And it's nice to have someone who can relay the information that's up to the minute, uh, fully vetted, authentic, life-saving information. And it can be uh, uh, shared with people in a human, uh, non-pressurized way, often through people like yours truly, who can say, uh, I can hold someone's hand, either literally or figuratively, and say with authenticity, I get it, because I really do, and there are lots of people who get it. I am in a profoundly fortunate position, Rick, uh, and due to nice people like you, I can draw a little more attention, I think, to this than the average person, because, as you mentioned, I've, I've uh, made my living and bored a lot of people for a lot of years by saying, hello, nurse, or nurse, or turtle power, whatever, um, and because I make my living with my voice, and that was... Uh, in question for a while. On the other side of it now, I have a, a story that's valid, and I can say, well, look, listen to me beforehand and listen to me afterward. And I dare you to tell the difference. So that's a pretty good uh, barometer for people to look at and say, wow, I think you can handle this, Uncle Dave. You know, 
So uh, that's what this is about. And by the way, people can go to headandneck.org and uh, see my story and those of others and, uh, and figure this out. A couple more questions for Rob Paulson. You know, there are many ways, especially when you, 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 you our age are over 50 and, you know, colon cancer, the things you check for. How do you check yeah. for oral cancer? Well, in my case, I did it on my own. I had, uh, I was shaving one morning and, and not, you know, not a difficult, or rather not an unusual store, just like you might be in a shower and you feel a lump, whatever. I um, was shaving and I felt, I don't know, a peanut-sized lump on the side of my neck. And a typical guy, I, I grew up playing hockey, and unless I can't feel a limb or uh, I'm, you know, bleeding profusely and need a couple of stitches, I go to the doctor once a year for uh, for my uh, tune-up, you know. And so this was probably about six months before I went to my uh, my physical. And I thought it was getting a little bit bigger, but it didn't hurt, didn't affect my work, no issues, nothing. And I read you know, we often go online and you can choose to be freaked out or choose to kind of blow it off. And I chose the latter, latter rather. Um, I went to my doctor about six months later. And I said, hey, doc, put your fingers in this. What do you think? And I'm telling you, Rick, within five seconds, literally, he said, nah, not good, pal. And I thought he was tripping me around. I said, yeah, what is it? He said, well, it's what I think it is. It seriously is not good. I'm going to make an appointment for you now to go see a head and neck guy down the hall here at um, Cedar sinai in L.A. And within two weeks, I did biopsy and, and determined that it was stage three metastatic squamous cell carcinoma of the throat. Uh, and it was staged at three because the lump that I discovered was the area to which the cancer had spread from an unseeable, or as they call it, occult tumor deep in my throat mm. at the base of my tongue. Mm. Um so that's how I found it. On the other hand, and probably more importantly, dentists are well-trained, even dental technicians, and that is not meant to slight their profession, um, but they're trained to, to uh, palpate your throat, your uh, uh, saliva glands, your tongue, um, the soft tissue under your tongue, the roof of your mouth. They know what to look for. And what looks like it could be a canker sore, and I'm not doing this to freak people out, but it's worth, a, it's worth it to go make a quick appointment with your dentist uh, or your ENT if you have any questions. And the reason it's important is that in addition to the fact that this can kill you, as we know by our, our late, um, the late great Roger Ebert, um, while I admire uh, his incredible bravery to go out and um, still sort of contact people and have folks see him and, and, and be a, uh, an incredible example of courage, it ain't a pretty way to go out. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't start to go away and they start hacking off pieces of your, of your jaw and your tongue, and, and forgive my, uh, my gruesome uh, description, but that's what it is. Yeah. And despite how many incredibly gifted plastic surgeons, it just doesn't, it's rough. And it is absolutely unnecessary. Uh, and because it is in a place that's, uh, that we use all the time, uh, our tongue, our mouth, our lips, uh, uh, tonsils, swallowing, it often presents itself way before something like, uh, uh, you know, uterine cancer or uh, uh, something that is a pancreatic cancer, something that by the time it presents is really deadly. This is something that presents early enough and can be checked very quickly, uh, and so you don't have to have to worry about having things cut off. By the way, on a lighter note, um, someone I know recently sat next to Michael Moore on a plane, Mr. Detroit, oh, yeah. Mr. Flint, and he That's said right. he had the worst B.O. he ever smelled in his life, and he had, <laughs> he had to put on three masks. And I just want to say that I've Ooh. met you many times, you're from Detroit, you're from Flint, and you don't have B.O. So I just don't want that area to get a bad name for itself. Thank you. I, I, I got to tell you, despite the fact that you can't drink the water, I, uh, <laughs> I think the people in Flint are, by and large, uh, surprisingly, remarkably talented, myself included, at personal hygiene. Uh, so thank you for that. Um, I, uh, I have not had the pleasure of smelling nor meeting uh, Mr. Moore. 
but um, I now will always look at him with uh, with a bit of a jaundiced eye, and maybe even put on a um, a mask just in case, you know. And I did a little what a research. Thing to look to. That's great. <laughs> Leave it to me to bring that up. Uh, one more right. thing. When I was looking up uh, Grand Blanc High School oh, alums, yeah. you got a Heisman winner there How in Mark that? Mark Ingram. Mark Ingram. That's right. Is he still playing in New Orleans? I, know, I think Mark Ingram is retired at this point. Oh, has he gone away? Yeah, he's okay. 33. So. Oh. Yeah, well, I, you know what? Um, Maybe he is still with New Orleans now that I think about it. Well, I don't think he's got any money left because Derek Carr, I mean, with all due respect to Derek Carr, that's a pardon me. That's a whole lot of money, <laughs> in my view, for Derek Carr. Um, on the other hand, say la vie, you know, I, good for them. But I uh, no Mark Ingram. He was there long after I obviously left. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's um, and they actually have. I, I have to say, I'm I'm a proud alumnus of Grand Blanc High School in the, uh, just about sixty miles north of Detroit, um, and. Uh, Years ago, they put my picture up in the hallway right next to my Ninja Turtle, Raphael. So, I, so I am uh, I'm a proud Ninja Turtle, and my parents got to see it, God bless them, before they checked out. They, uh, my mom, oh, my God, honey, I saw you, your picture of Raphael <laughs> in the hall at Grand Blanc High School. So it was uh, quite a proud moment for Mom and Dad. Got to throw out Evan Peters, too, the guy that played Dahmer. He went to your high That's school. That's right. Yeah. That's right, and I've not met him yet. He's a terrific actor. Mm-hmm. Obviously, we travel in different circles because I go to you know studios and and the water tower. Um, but uh, yeah, he's wonderful, and I I uh, am very grateful for having had a childhood that uh, included playing playing hockey for the Grand Blanc High School Bobcats. That was a remarkably wonderful time in my life, and um, and now it is only eclipsed. Listen to this, folks. And now it is only eclipsed. <laughs> By speaking with Rick, Tick. that's <laughs> the only thing that is any better. You know, I was. Uh, it's funny. I was. I was. I was just asking Dominic. I, I talked to somebody famous the other day, and your name came up, and I said, "Isn't he the nicest guy ever?" And they concurred. So I know uh, that you you're nice great. to everybody. Hey, ever before we let you go, remember head and neck dot org. Head and neck dot org. We've been speaking with the great Rob Paulson. Tools and talk, Rob Paulson. Well, thank you, my friend. I, uh, I, I, it is an absolute pleasure, and I appreciate the kind words with respect to my being a, a nice guy, but Jesus, Rick, I have no reason not to be. And if you ever hear that I smell <laughs> or that I'm not a nice guy, I want you or Dominic to find me and slap me across the head, and I'll, uh, I'll straighten out. Thanks so much, man. It's always a pleasure.